In this video, you will witness the interrogation of Rocky Rambo, Wei Nam Cam, who was accused of taking the lives of 68-year-old Richard Jones and 64-year-old Diana Ma Jones in September 2017. According to reports and evidence, Rocky did not know the couple, and for reasons unknown, he planned out a vicious and brutal attack, leaving families and the public wondering why it happened. Watch and listen closely during the interrogation to see what Rocky has to say. R.I.P. to the victims, Richard and Diana Ma Jones. Hey, there. How are you? Good. I'm Sergeant Leah Terpsma. It's Hi. good to meet you. How Hi. are you today? I guess you've had better days. Yeah, sure. <sighs> yeah, sure. Well, um, you're Rocky, are you? Yeah. What should I call you? Is that the name you like? Rocky. Yeah, okay, I'll call you that. Call me Leah, of course. I've come in to talk to you about what's going on because I'm sure you're wondering what's happening um, and there's a lot happening of course in an investigation like this pretty often there's a lot of people that we need to talk to um, yeah make sure you let me know Rocky if there's anything you need for your comfort today so I'm gonna get some sandwiches going so do you have any understanding of what, why you're here today yeah, what's your understanding of the reason you're here today? They sat out on the rest for two counts of murder. Yeah, do you know anything about that? The name of it. Do you, do you know those people? No, you don't know them. Okay, good. What kind of work do you do? I have no specific job that I know. At this point, I don't know. You don't know? You're I, still I, searching? I can. I'm willing to do many things, but no. Not much I can do. Normally what? Not much I can do. How come? Because I think Simon I told me that you also uh, had been um, educated in, was it economics? Yep. What kind of job would that give you? Working working bank, kind of things. Oh, but, okay. Well, the detective is soft-spoken and opens up the interview with some personal questions for the suspect to answer, including where he grew up and what his current occupation is. This will allow her to build some rapport and get the suspect talking. It will also allow her to gain some knowledge on how the suspect responds when asked certain baseline questions. So where did you go to school? You mean university? Can we? Was it hard? No. It's too easy. Too easy. So you're pretty smart? No. So it was easy for you, but you're not smart. That'd be just, it's just easy in that university, maybe. How are you doing? How are you feeling these days? Right now, not so good. <laughs> no. How are you sleeping at night? Hmm? How are you sleeping at night? Good. But, like what? Just asking. Nothing special. Is anyone gonna miss you? Hmm? Is anyone gonna miss you? Do you have a, a woman on the go or a, or a no. <laughs> partner on the go? No. One thing you should know, Rocky, is that I'm not here to hold you. I'm here to um, make sure that if you have something to say about this, uh, whether it's to tell me that you didn't have anything to do with it, I'm here to receive that information from you. Yeah, but Whatever even it is. if I tell you that, you wouldn't release me because of that. I want to play video games, but well, that's not much of a choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have a lot of video games, Rocky. That's true. According to reports, Rocky was not career oriented and spent more than 14 hours per day playing video games. He relied heavily on his parents and savings to pay for daily living expenses and support his huge gaming addiction. Do you think it's fair? Fair what? Well, you just mentioned a few things that you'd rather be doing. Rather be eating. It's not the metal fair. It's just I don't have any power. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you need to hold me, 
I can't get feels. <laughs> mm. You're quite right that you don't get to play video games. Um, you don't get to walk out of here, but but you do have a lot of power, Rocky. I'm sensing some not not something I would hear. <laughs> Feel like a trap. <laughs> okay, the trap. If it's set, mm -hmm. it was set by you. Mm -hmm. hmm. What do you mean? Well, I'm going to show you some things, and they don't have anything to do with me. Okay. And they have everything to do with you. Uh -huh. Right now, Rocky, we have done a thorough investigation about uh -huh. what happened in that house. Mm -hmm. And you, you and I both know what happened in that house. Uh, I don't know, actually. You haven't told me. Okay. Well, maybe you don't know this house. Let me ask. Uh, you're making me nervous. All right. Do you know this house? Maybe you don't know what happened in that house. I... I have nothing to say. Have you been inside this house? I don't want to talk about it. So is that a yes? I don't want to talk about it. The suspect expresses that he is nervous and withdraws from the detective, emphasizing that he doesn't want to talk about it. According to reports, Rocky did not personally know the victims and it is likely, given the brutality of the crime, that he is ashamed to discuss such a senseless act of violence. I don't know why this happened, Rocky. I really don't. But I'd sure like to know why. I'm going to tell you something about that guy, that man. He, um, he isn't a very nice guy. Hmm? That man that died. He's not a very nice guy. Did you ever meet him? In the street or at the shopping mall or anything like that? I've heard from lots of people in the neighborhood because he walked a lot in the neighborhood and he had a problem with alcohol and he wasn't a very nice man. I don't know, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to connect the dots. The detective tries to establish a motive for the crime. She claims that the male victim was a drunk and unpleasant person, hoping that this might create a connection with Rocky, but he is unresponsive. He just sits in silence as the detective explains her strategy. I'm trying to find a reason for this to happen because it either happened because of something that was going on with you separately or a thousand things, like I said, that's happened in the last years that has caused something with you or maybe it has to do with these people. I've been sitting in this room with lots of different kinds of people and you seem very polite to me. Uh, you do? No. no. You're okay. You just be yourself. You just be yourself. You're going to be fine. I know this is scary. Just, well, what? Not that far. Well, I'm, I'm going to lose my patient. I'm, I, I'm kind of sure. It's just, well, I don't know how long can you hold me, but I don't know. I want you to know something. I want you to get this in your head. We're holding you. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. So and Wait till you see what's here. Because I want to remind you, I was just talking about September 13th. Uh -huh. Do you know where you were on September 13th? How about I remember? <laughs> I can show you how to remember because I know where you were September 13th. You want to know where you were? Although the detective has appeared to be very empathetic during the interrogation, she also remains in control and confrontational, reminding the suspect that he is being held indefinitely with the purpose of investigating and determining Rocky's involvement and motive for the crime in question. This balancing act by the detective is a deliberate technique that can confuse and create stress for certain suspects, which ultimately can cause an emotional breakdown and help the detective gain a confession. I don't want to talk about it. You were at the Canadian Tire buying these gloves and buying this hatchet and buying this hat, son. I got you on video doing those things. So I don't want you to sit there thinking this is nothing. I don't have to worry about this. 
You have to worry about this, Rocky. Video footage and evidence show that the suspect purchased multiple items a couple weeks before the crime in question, including a hatchet. Despite his planning, Rocky fled the scene of the crime but left behind the murder weapons, which included a knife, and the hatchet, which still had the store barcode on it. This key piece of evidence was used to connect the video footage to the weapon. Now I've told you that I know you went shopping on the 13th of uh, September, and that I have your image, your face, buying these things, and I have the receipt to prove that. And I'm going to show you that video so that you can start trusting that what I'm saying is true. What's your position? Waiting for you to get those video. Okay, let me get it. <laughs> You're gonna get it anyway. <laughs> yeah, for sure I am. For sure I am. I just I'm trying to I'm trying to establish some level of trust with you, Rocky. Okay? So I'm gonna show you those videos, okay? Hey. How are you doing? No, you're not good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Here, fix this for me. Please. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Let's see. The detective sits next to Rocky and shows him the video footage, which displays him browsing through the store and purchasing the hatchet along with some other items. The detective informs the suspect that her intent is to build some trust between them by showing him the footage and also to encourage him to face the undeniable truth and take responsibility for his actions. Let's see if this approach works and if Rocky begins to talk about what happened. Do you remember not very long ago? Um... I think maybe just a few days ago, less than a week ago, you were at the grocery store. I remember being at the grocery store and there was a girl there. She had a sore arm. I can see from your face that you're lighting up. You can remember that very well. But that woman with the sore arm, that was a police woman. What did you do? You did one of these. Remember that? Do you know why you did that for us? Do you know why we had you do that? What do you think? Well, the reason we had you do that for us, Rocky, was we were looking for your DNA. One of our investigators found the serial number on that hatchet and found out that Canadian Tire is the only place that sells that. And then Canadian Tire pointed out, hey, this is the only sale of that hatchet we'll show you the video. So they showed us that video of you uh, buying the hatchet, the hat that happens to be the same hat that we found in the house under the kitchen table. And, and when I saw this scene with some obvious evidence that's obviously going to be full of your DNA, I don't know why it was left there. I have nothing to say. I mean that that theory obviously offends you, but I don't I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to make sense of what happened there. And without you, I can't really do it. I can only say I know Rocky's responsible. I know Rocky's going to be charged with murder. That's all I know. Some people do this kind of thing to draw attention because they feel neglected by their parents, they feel neglected by their family, they don't have any friends, they're lonely, and they want some attention. I don't know. Go out then. <laughs> Go out, meet people. Mom. Why kill people? <laughs> What is a good reason? Because there are good reasons to kill people. I mean, it doesn't make them lawful, but there are good reasons to kill people, right? There's war, 
and there's revenge and somebody's sleeping with your wife and somebody insults somebody else uh, on a very serious level I don't know Some robbery sometimes is, is why people do it I mean the, those aren't lawful reasons but they they are reasons Oh, you come on. What's the reason for this? I, I have nothing to say. Rocky is interrogated for over five hours and does not reveal a motive or rational reason for committing the crime in question. He nervously laughs throughout the interview and vaguely answers the detective's questions, somewhat appearing to be talking to himself rather than having a conversation. The detective proceeds to show the suspect pictures of the crime scene and insists that they have the video footage and DNA collected, including DNA found under Diana's fingernails. The detective insists that they know beyond a doubt that Rocky is responsible for the crime. They now need to know why it happened. This is uh, the report from the autopsy where they took the fingernails off Mrs. Ma Jones. Is there any reasonable explanation for why Mrs. Ma Jones would have your DNA under her fingernails? It's been a very long time when somebody is faced with something like this that someone opts to sit coldly and offer no apology, no remorse, no... If I say what? You're gonna release me? Rocky shows no signs of remorse and only seems to be concerned with himself. He has repeatedly advised throughout the interrogation that he doesn't want to talk, and in this moment, he reveals that talking won't change a thing. He is aware that he's been caught and will most likely spend the rest of his life in prison, and he cold-heartedly displays a refusal to cooperate. Don't you understand that after all this conversation, you're not being released? No matter what, I know. you've killed two people, man. You're not going anywhere. This isn't about being released. This is about helping other people. But you don't care about that. That's all I've been talking about all night is you helping other people. You've done enough to hurt other people, that's for sure. But you're just sitting there coldly. Eh, I don't have anything to say. I don't really give a shit. You're not me. No, I certainly am not. Because you know the difference? I have empathy for other people and I care no, about other No, you're people. not being charged for murder. I didn't kill anybody either. That's the difference, man. It's such a simple thing to give people and you won't even give them that. You know, Rocky, I can sit there and I can feel that you are feeling something. I can see that you're emotional. Why aren't you taking this chance to at least express remorse? Maybe today you're not ready to talk about the whole ugly story, but at least say you're sorry. For what? You're an animal. Rocky's interrogation lasted over nine hours. It concluded with him talking to himself in Cantonese, claiming that he killed no one and had no reason to be remorseful. He was later convicted to life in prison for two counts of murder, with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Although Rocky's defense lawyers blamed the attack on his addiction to gaming and insisted that Rocky could not distinguish the difference between a video game and real life before, during, and after the trial, Rocky has not disclosed any rational reason or motive for the crime. The true motive continues to remain a mystery. R.I.P. to the victims, Richard Jones and Diana Ma Jones. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Do you think justice was served and does the punishment fit the crime? Be sure to comment your thoughts and let us know what you think about this interrogation, including the sentencing of this young man. With that, click the button to subscribe for more, be safe, and we'll see you in our next video.